All right, good afternoon. At this time, I call to order a public hearing of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners on Monday, November the 1st, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. at the Franklin County Justice Center in Carnesville, Georgia. We know for a record that we have all five commissioners present. Uh, Mr. Franklin is joining us. He was delayed by traffic. Uh, so welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, today, we're resuming our in-person meetings after meeting virtually during September and October. And although our case numbers locally of coronavirus are falling, uh, we continue to ask that everyone practice social distancing, wear a mask if you feel that's appropriate. Next item on the agenda for this afternoon's public hearing is the approval of the agenda. So, commissioners, at this time, is there a motion to approve the public hearing agenda as presented? I'll make a motion that we approve the agenda for this public hearing, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Wester has made a motion that we approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second that. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Foster has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor of the motion to approve the agenda as presented signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry four to zero and the agenda is approved as presented. The purpose of this afternoon's public hearing is to receive public comments for or against new proposed zoning applications that will be considered for action by the board at tonight's regular board meeting immediately following this hearing. Uh, no action will be taken at this hearing and all parties are welcome to remain after the public hearing for the regular meeting itself. We have one item on the agenda for the public hearing and after introducing this item, we're going to ask our planning and zoning director uh, or planning director to present a description of the application as well as his recommendation and the recommendations of the planning and zoning commission. We'll have the applicant, uh, if he's present, to speak first on behalf of the request. After the applicant has spoken, we call first for anyone who wishes to speak in favor of the application. Uh, then we call for individuals that wish to speak against the application. At the end of the public comments, uh, the applicant will have another opportunity to speak, to answer or rebut any uh, comments that were made during public comments by others, and to give a summary statement. And then commissioners may also question the applicant at this time. Members of the public who wish to comment either for or against an application will be recognized and called individually. And when you come up to the podium, uh, start by giving your name and address to our clerk, Ms. Kayla Finger, uh, when you come up to the podium. Please note that all comments must pertain to the public hearing item that we are considering tonight. You may not speak to any other topic or application at this time during the hearing. Each person will have up to five minutes to speak and the clerk will have a visible timer that you can see uh, so that you'll know how much time you have remaining. Questions may not be asked and speakers may not yield unused time to another person. Members of the public are required to follow the same rules of decorum as each commissioner. This includes being respectful and civil and avoiding personal attacks. All comments should be directed to the chair and members of the audience may not comment or interrupt while someone else is speaking. Uh, we ask that you please help us to facilitate a fair and impartial hearing by being courteous to others. Uh, we ask each person to take care and observe and respect the five-minute time limit. This limit will be strictly enforced. Members of the public are not permitted to interrupt while others are speaking, and we respectfully ask that you re refrain from side conversations while others are speaking. Interrupting, talking over others, and jeering are not permitted at any time. The only item for discussion at this afternoon's public hearing is a rezone request. Chris Moon of 345 Smith Road, Livonia, has filed an application for an amendment to the Franklin County zoning map from commercial general to agriculture intensive on an approximately 24.24 acre tract of land located on Pleasant Hill Road and further identified as tax parcel 062-127C. So at this time, our planning director, Mr. Delosier, is going to come and summarize the application for the board. All right, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, as the chairman said, uh, Mr. Moon is going to is wanting to rezone from commercial general to ag intensive. Uh, this track of land is uh, family land, and he's wanting to build his personal uh, single family residential house on it. And it's currently zoned commercial, which it being zoned commercial, we can't give uh, residential building permits out for. Uh, back as far back as I can track this track of land, I think in 2005 when zoning first was adopted in Franklin County, 
uh, this track and a, there was there's a good bit of track surrounding it were rezoned uh, to commercial general. Uh, the, the location is, I can understand why they did it, uh, but either way, it prevents Mr. Moon from building a residential house on the lot and he's wanting to get this rezoned so he can start construction. Uh, it was the recommendation unanimously of the Planning Commission to approve it, and it's my recommendation to approve it as well. Okay, any conditions? No. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Leisure. At this time, we're going to ask the applicant, Mr. Uh, Moon, to come up and talk to us about his application. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Chris Moon, 345 uh, three, Smith Road. Yeah, about, <clears throat> about two uh, months ago, I... Uh, was that close to getting my building permit and then uh oh <laughs> uh, nobody knew this was rezoned back in 2005 uh, to to commercial so yeah we're just i'm just trying to get this rezoned back to what we all thought it was forever yeah. in ag so um trying to get started on the house so okay all right if that's all we're gonna we're gonna call for comments and then we'll have you come back up it's kind of back and forth okay all right thanks uh, at this time, is there anybody that wishes to speak in favor of Mr. Uh, Moon's application? If you, if you do, if you would like to, please raise your hand. Anyone that would like to speak in favor of the application? Okay. Hearing none, anyone who would like to speak against his application? If you would like to speak against his application, please raise your hand. Anyone that would like to speak against? Okay. Hearing none, at this time we're going to uh, have Mr. Moon come back. If he's got anything else he wants to add, and then I'm going to allow commissioners to ask you questions. Okay? You pretty, you pretty well summarized yeah. it. Commissioners, do you have questions? Any? No, I mean, no. Okay. All right. Well, if that's it, that's all. Yeah. That was quick and easy. All right. Thank all right. you. All right, at this time, without objection, the public hearing stands adjourned. We will reconvene for the regular board meeting at 6 o'clock p.m. Thank you, everyone. All right, at this time, I call to order the regular board meeting of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners on Monday, November the 1st, 2021, at 6 o'clock p.m. here at the Franklin County Justice Center in Carnesville, Georgia. We know for the record that we have all five commissioners present for tonight's meeting, so we want to welcome everyone and thank you for coming. Uh, today we're or tonight we're resuming our in-person meetings after uh, holding virtual meetings of the last two months in September and October. And although our local case numbers are falling, uh, it, the virus is still out there, and so we encourage you to practice social distancing and wear a mask if appropriate. Uh, at this time, we're going to have an invocation given by Commissioner Wester, and we'll follow that with the pledge. We just ask that you remain standing and join us for the pledge. Please stand. Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, just thanking you for everything that you've blessed us with, Lord. We thank you for looking over our county and, and looking over our citizens, Father. Father, I ask that as we go through this meeting tonight, that you would just give us the knowledge and the wisdom that, they, that we need to make wise decisions that will benefit the citizens of our county, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you would just look over us and continue to bless us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the meeting agenda. So is there a motion to approve tonight's meeting agenda as presented? I'll make the motion to approve tonight's agenda as presented. Thank you. Commissioner Foster has made a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Franklin has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to approve the meeting agenda as presented signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry four to zero, and the agenda is approved as presented. At this time, we're going to open the meeting for public comment. During this portion of the meeting, any member of the public may speak on any topic of concern they would like to address to the board. This is a comment section only. If you have questions, we're going to ask that you submit those in writing to our clerk, Ms. Finger, at the end of the meeting, along with your contact information, and someone will respond to your questions in the next few days. When you come up to the podium, please begin by giving your name and address to the clerk. In order to facilitate the meeting and allow everyone the opportunity to speak, 
Each person must limit their comments to five minutes or less. Uh, each person may only speak once, and you may not yield unused time to another person. The clerk will have a timer set with the display so that you can see how much time you have remaining and adjust your remarks accordingly. Members of the public are required to follow the same rules of decorum that each of the commissioners must follow. This includes being respectful and civil and avoiding any personal attacks. Please help us tonight to facilitate a fair and impartial hearing by being courteous to others. We'll give each person sufficient time to express your concerns as long as you're courteous and respectful of others. We ask each person to take care to observe the five minute time limit. This will be enforced strictly. Members of the public are not permitted to interrupt while others are speaking and we respectfully ask that you refrain from side conversations while other people are speaking. Interrupting, talking over others, and jeering are not permitted at any time. We have a very large crowd tonight, so it's important that everyone is quiet while others are speaking so that everyone can hear and understand what is being said. So this time, if you would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand and wait to be recognized, and then we'll have you come up. So would anyone like to make a comment? Come on up. Please remember to start by giving your name and address to the clerk. All right. Thank you. My name is Charles Saragusa, and I live at 60 Neal Road, and I'm opposed to this zoning that you're trying to do on Neal Road. I think it's Troy Pipeline or something. I think that's the name of the company. But I, we have enough traffic by my house as it is. We have a lot of buses that travel through there, and it doesn't seem like Franklin County wants to maintain the road, so I do it. And if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I'm the one who gets out there with my tractor and fills in all the potholes, and I've had DOT come out and fix the paving by 59. But it, it's just, it's too much traffic there, and I don't understand how their company that they have in commerce is like 10 to 15 miles away, why they need another substation to store equipment. It's just too much. I've lived there for almost 24 years. I like it out there. I like the country and the county that I live in. But I used to live in Alpharetta, Roswell, and that's why I left. It's just too much traffic. <clears throat> and I'm getting up in age where I don't need all that. I want to have a restful place. I don't want my property values to go down. I don't want my taxes to go up because I'm retired. But it, it's just it's just too much. And I've seen how much equipment they have because they're doing a lot of work on 59 and 63, putting in a gas line, the sewer line up 59 to take care of the chicken hatchery where they put a roundabout in, which is not in our county. But it's still a lot of traffic. Um, <clears throat> let me look at my notes here. And the road is not wide enough. You get a school bus on that road, they're going to have to stop somewhere along that road, probably by the entrance coming off of 59, so that school bus can get through. And I've noticed that there's more vehicles, like on the school buses, when they pull out, they pretty much take up two lanes when they come out on 59. If you're coming up 59 from Carnesville and they're sitting out there, there's no way they can stop. And that's the same way with this equipment that they're wanting to put in at Troy. I am, I'm totally against it. I, I think that uh, it's ludicrous to put something in where they have a plant that's 15 miles away. And they're going to put more traffic on my side because it's going to put them on 59 instead of them having to go through Banks County to get on to 85. Um, I don't know anything about the company. I don't have a problem with them. I don't want any stock in it or anything, but I think that in a residential area, we don't need to be zoned in commercial because once it starts, there's no end to it. They've already tried to put a motocross in. That didn't make it. And do you know how much traffic that would have put on Neal Road? Neal Road is not designed for all the traffic that goes on it now. And then you, they're going to put more on it? No, we don't need that. Um, I think that's pretty much all that I have to say. And I thank you for your time.
Okay, I appreciate it. Did you say your last name was Goodson? Saragusa. Goosa? Saragusa. Saragusa. S-I-R-A-G-U-S-A. Okay, all right. Thank you, Mr. Right. Saragusa. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? If you would, raise your hand. Come on up. Remember, give your name and address when you start. Yes. Uh, Dwellin Braswell. Ops. D-W-I-L-Y-N. Uh, Dwellin Braswell. Uh, Dwellin Braswell. 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 The county line goes through the property. This is evident by the county sign marker that is on I-85, which is 483 feet south of Mill Road, and we have the plat maps that I was telling you about that show the county line running through the property. Um, property cannot be annexed from one county to another without state legislature approval, and we cannot find any record that that has actually occurred. Um, I did want to state in the last meeting that toward construction when it was brought up with the petitions to where it literally stated that the majority of the people who signed were from Banks County. That is, a lot of that is true, but the problem is, is that you've got a road that's in both counties and we are all neighbors. We all want to, you know, we all got to get along. We all, you know, want to love each other. So it's still, even though, yes, that's correct, but you just can't discard certain people because of where they live. Um, Neal Road is unimproved with no utilities with a 50 uh, with a 30 foot right of way for ingress and egress purposes. However, we did find plat maps at the um, up at the courthouse of maps showing no right of way on Neal Road. Um, I also think that if you allow something that's coming in with light manufacturing or light industrial, that there's also going to be lights because they said that they would have trucks coming in at all different hours. And I think that sometimes when you have lights. And different times that I work, that's also distracting to other neighbors that are on the property. That also leads to more theft. And of course, the road now, we're not having a theft issue, so of course, no one wants a theft issue. Um, that's just what happens with a lot of growth of different areas. I do think that there's a place for it. I mean, there's a roundabout that does have an industrial area that's right down the road. The road is not wide enough for a tractor trailer to turn if a car is at the stop sign or the same. A tractor trailer is at the stop sign and a car needs to turn, then they can't get by either. Um, it is a safety issue, of course, on Highway 59 and Highway 63 due to low visibility on the roads. There are turns and curves on both, the, both of those main roads that you actually pull out onto. Neighbors have said that there have been several accidents on Neal in, in, those, in those both areas where it tees into the main roads there, and no one wants any more um, wrecks. We don't want to see anybody hurt. Um, it's also a safety hazard. Um, excuse me, I'm sorry. It will bring a lot of big truck traffic. There are fit, they have 50-ton trailers. They have cranes. They have huge um, weighted machineries on the road with large, and they also have large backhoes. All of those things create are wide loads, and it's and there's certain areas of Neal Road that are actually narrow, and in those narrow areas, it there's no way that anybody can pass. There are a few areas that's a little bit where somebody can get by, but not with someone that's a wide load. That is also um, where it's going to cause extra noise and air pollution to the area, and there are a lot of older um, gentlemen and ladies that live on the street, and that is not something that we that anyone would like to see for them as well. Um, there are and not any chicken or feed trucks that travel Mill Road. There's no chicken, chicken houses on Mill Road. Um, we also spoke with Banks County and went to a meeting there. And as of this morning, no one has contacted Banks County in regards to getting their input on this. Um, we, um, and there were a lot of people there that were opposed to it in Banks County as well because a lot of that road is, that falls into the Banks County area. It's hard for school buses to pass now, so obviously if you have a bigger wide load in a school bus, they're just not going to be able to pass each other. In the September um, meeting, the owner of Troy Construction said that there would be two to four trucks a day, up to 12 to 14 trucks a day. However, you know, whatever amount it is, once you actually allow it, it doesn't matter. They can do whatever they want to do at that point. I don't have anything against them, I'm just saying. This proposed zoning will cause road damage from all of that heavy equipment. Um, it's just wear and tear on the road. Um, a lot of, when you have a wide load, we're afraid that we would be having to replace a lot of mailboxes if they were to get knocked down too. Mine just got knocked down <laughs> for something else. 
The taxpayers of Franklin Bounce County are not going to provide land or funds for the road to be expanded, expanded, so toy construction would have to pay for that, which would not be only paying for their own improvements, but also for the easements to the property owners down through the road. The property owners on Neal Road are not going to give up their front yards or trees to expand the road. They like it just the way it is. Jason Dykes with the DOT said that there may need to be a study on the map that he thought that there would need to be improvements done to the road on 63 and 59 to accommodate large trucks. According to also Jason Dykes, is that me? Can I do one more sentence? Is that the, is that the, yeah, I'm sorry, we'll have to cut you off there. Okay, Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. I was listening for a ding, ding, ding. Sorry. Okay, anybody like to speak? Raise your hand. You can come on up. So please start by giving your name and address. We, we've got copies of it. That, that's fine, though. I'll just give you another one. All right. There's over 100 signatures on that. Thank you. And then I'll get back to the thing. I want to show Appreciate you some other stuff. Maybe I'll get time to do it all. I live at 1190 Culpeper Road. <clears throat> also, according to Jason Dyke with the DOT, okay, according to Jason Dyke with the DOT, before Troy Construction can get a land disturbance permit, according to him telling me, they will have to uh, have a meeting with Troy Construction and the county about if they need to do upgrades and improvements <coughs> on the road. Also, <clears throat> light industrial opens the door for future industrial and light manufacturing in the area it will bring higher volume of traffic from large trucks and unforeseen problems. <clears throat> right now, everything in the area is on agriculture intensive, the whole big area. If they decide, to, if Troy Construction has their business and they decide to sell their business to somebody or something, they go out of business, whatever might happen, then it would, it would allow light manufacturing to happen at this site with no further rezoning. <clears throat> light industrial will lower the residential values on this road. The uh, proposed development does not bring any economic benefits in any way. It does not bring any new jobs to the area. And it's just safe and health concerns for Franklin and Banks County residents. <clears throat> Light industrial is one of the most undesirable land uses. People move in and move to Franklin and Banks County to live in a peaceful traffic community with a re relaxing peace away from the noise pollution and traffic which will accompany would be bringing with them <clears throat> we are uh, we are not opposed to choice of being in franklin county but you, but your fellow residents and taxpayers have spoken out against this being here we say no to rezoning in the neighborhood okay on the county line issues i have a lot of stuff here that shows the county line being through this property as well I think that's the next important thing to show. Uh, I got a bunch of pieces of paper here. I don't know if I have time to show them all. There's one. This is another one that shows the county line. I might have to show you too. This is the county line going through. It's probably the little dash line is it. Going through it. Um, here's another one. And these other plats here, this is like the county maps. Uh, this is Neil Road. You don't show the property too well. That's Neil Road and then the county line here. And this is the property sitting right there. Um, Here's one that's on uh, where it was for sale, shows the cane line running through. Y'all can pass them around, whatever you want to do. And on the right of ways, I got some stuff here. Let's see, this is cane line too, man. I got some cane line stuff here. Here's where the bridge is at. I don't know who wants to see this one too. Just shows the cane line right there. This is the property sitting right there. Property sitting Y'all can keep them away if y'all need to do. Y'all can pass them around. Thank you. Uh, and on the right of ways, let's see which one I got here to show the it's right here in front of the road. <coughs> I got a couple here. This is no right of way found. There's one. No right of way found. And I'll just have to pass them around. I got some more over there, but I just need to I'll just pass them to y'all. And then I got some pictures of Neil Road as well. And this is just to show you just take a glance at the pictures Thank you. and they show the the road narrow of it and diff, different pictures as you go down the road and when it rains this is going to intensify majorly these machines they're going to bring in are usually between 10 and a half feet and 11 and a half feet wide 
I think on range anywhere from 60,000. Some of these big backhoes weigh 90,000. I don't know what the biggest one they have is. They have some big cranes. But this, if this, if this machine weighs 80,000 pounds, the tractor trailer go full on go weigh about 35,000. So you can be about 115,000 pounds gross weight. The average tractor trailer's gross weight is actually 80,000 pounds to go up down the road. And I also have another yard in Commerce that's off the, the main drag there just a little bit that's got some, um, it's not looking quite as good as the one they have right up on the road. I don't know what they intend to bring over here 100% because that's going to be, we will know that until they get there. See what it lays out for us. I don't want to look at all the pictures, but that's all I got to say right now. So I'll just put okay. all the pictures together and let you look at all them good. All right, thank you. Get any more of if y'all need me to point out anything else on there, I got some county maps of the county, but the banks of Franklin, but I'm taking a long time to show that to you probably. Yeah. This is actually a map for y'all. This is, this, is right this is a, a map, partial map. This is the police property right here. This is the county line. So right there it says Banks County Tax and then Franklin County Tax. And there it says Tax and Banks County Lines coming up. Goes right through the property. It's going to be a larger percentage in Banks than Franklin. And you come on up. That's a different line than your other document shows. On, on one of those others, it, it was more down kind of in the middle. Okay. Yeah. Well, let, I'll pass this around. Thank you, Mr. That's Brother. what it's going to be. That's what it's going to be. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else wants to speak? You'll raise your hand. Come on up. I talked to uh, Mr. Braswell earlier today, and I just want to say that I commend your efforts from what he has done um, to endeavor the opinions of your constituents. He received over 100 uh, signatures opposing the rezoning on Mill Road. It is in my opinion that this is a moment for you, the commissioners of Franklin County, to really take in consideration what your constituents how they feel. This will negatively impact everyone around here if you approve this. Highway 63 is a hilly, curvy road with some almost blind driveway. The speed on this road exceeds what should be legal. That being said, the ramifications of more trucks on this road will potentially not only cause wrecks, but possibly fatalities. And since I have friends, and uh, family members that live on this road, I'm not willing to take that risk. And I hope you're not either. Um, we do know that there's a new construction of houses on Cedar Ridge that's going to be uh, probably 100 more cars. Um, that being said, you've got more of a potential of wrecks because the road is little by little increasing um, with uh, traffic. And I was told by some of y'all that y'all were going to be talking to some of the Banks County commissioners, but um, I talked to one of them the other day, and he said no one has contacted them. I was told that y'all were going to find out what they, how they feel. Um, and I did talk to one of them. He said he's highly opposed to this, <coughs> that this is not a good idea. It's dangerous. Um, and I just hope that your uh, decision would be based on the safety and lives of the people that live there. We do not want this. It is overwhelmingly almost unanimous with all the people that he has talked to. I mean, there's not that many people there, but for him to get that many signatures, that's huge. So you really need to take into consideration these huge trucks that are going to be going down the road. It's dangerous. That's all I can say. And when I pull out of my driveway, I have uh, trucks flying by me now. I don't know what the speed limit is. I think it's, what, 55? But they're going, I know, 70 around these cars. I've had two 18-wheelers almost plow into me because they're working on the, the uh, bridge. So soon those 18-wheelers will be off the road, but we don't need these other trucks on the road. And and I don't know what she, the lady said earlier. She said if you allow Troy to come in there, they, they said 10 or 12 trucks a day. Trust me, it will probably double that. That's all I have to say. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Parks. 
Okay. Would anyone else like to speak? Please raise your hand. Come on up. Remember to give us your name and address. I'm Lisa McMillan. I live on 3830 Williamsbridge Road. Say it again. Lisa McMillan. 3830. I'm sorry to change the subject. Uh, now, you're, you're on the agenda at a later point. Is this what you're... Okay. Why, why don't you... Yeah, we have a, we have a spot. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is just general public comment. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. All right. Anyone like to speak? Come on up. I live at 1120 Mill Road. I've been a resident on Mill Road since 2000, and I have witnessed, I live right, Fakes County runs through my driveway, but I am a Franklin County resident. Um, this past summer, we had some horrific accidents on 85, and traffic was diverted to 59 and 63, and conveniently used Neil Road as a pass-through. It was horrific because tractor trailers were going through there, and as people have already attested to, it will not accommodate that kind of traffic. It went on all night, one night. And I was just horrified that it was going to result in more accidents and fatalities. Um, I live on the dirt road side, and I can also attest to what they said about the road being in horrible conditions. Uh, in the 21 years I've been there, I've had two vehicles overturn in my in front of my house coming off the paved road onto the dirt going too fast and flipped over. So um, I am vehemently opposed to this. I don't believe that we need it in this area. There are other more suitable places that Troy construction can go. I prefer to have it continue to be agricultural. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Simpson. Anyone like to speak? Come on. resident of Highway 63, I'm very concerned about the safety of the residents of Mill Road and others on Highway 63 like myself. The entry to Mill Road from Highway 63 is extremely narrow. Traffic entering and leaving have only a small margin of room to negotiate the move. Large trucks, especially those pulling trailers, would most likely find it necessary to exaggerate the entrance or exit to Mill Road or onto Highway 63 by using a very wide swing, which would mean um, encompassing taking up both of the lanes while trying to turn in or off of Mill. To compound the issue, the entrance and exit to Mill Road from Highway is located in a very dangerous curve. I fear more traffic accidents in this area, even possible. The traffic load is already um, quite large in the area as a result of the um, detour um, as traffic is rerouted. Um, to allow this construction would allow unwanted and unwelcome activities for the future and for our community. And it is my opinion that to allow this construction, it would be a slap in the face to our community. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Cannon. Okay. Would anyone else like to speak? Come on. I'm here to speak against the Neil Road construction. 
I bought my house over there approximately two years ago. This day and time, houses is high. I spent over a quarter million dollars on a house and stuff, and I researched my to, to get to where I wanted to be. I didn't want to be in an industrial park or something like that. So I found land that was what I wanted, A1, whatever. And I'm sure this Troy Construction has done that too. So there's a reason for them wanting to come over there. It's either cheaper on their taxes, it's there's a reason for it. They ain't just plucking that out of the air. So I, I don't think they should be able to come and infringe on my things because I've done my research. If I wanted to come up here beside the Mexican restaurant here in town and put a hog farm up there, y'all wouldn't allow that. So I think we ought to be against that. And this is what these folks wanted to live in, this kind of area, and we don't want to live in an industrial park. They, they got big trucks and all that. I ain't against them. Hey, they got a place over there at Commerce, that's fine. They, industrial parks, that's what we zone stuff for. That's what this board and everything's all about. Keeping pretty much people happy. But that's all I got to say. I just don't see that they ought to be able to infringe on me because I I done my research. But they ain't going to do theirs except for to try to step on the little way. The way all I look at it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thanks. Beasley. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Come on up. Uh, I'm here to oppose this. Um, basically, as a crow flies, they will back up to our property roughly two or 3,000 feet away. Doesn't seem like much, um, but this would give Light Industrial a toehold on this roughly one square mile area where I was privileged to move into just over a year ago. And in Banks County, we already were able to stop the property next door from becoming light industrial. And we're going to have that fight again, I'm afraid, in the next six months or so. But by letting this be rezoned on a dirt road, that's going to allow a toehold. And unfortunately, um, economic development seems to think it's great to turn this whole area into a big industrial park. And the property directly wraps around mine is not this property, but it's 200 acres. They proposed four one million square foot spec warehouses. And those are sitting all over 85 vacant. And they sit for years. And I don't want this area to become that. That's not why I moved here. Um, like the gentleman before me, it was on agricultural, minimum two and a half acre lots for houses. I thought that was perfect. That's why I moved here. That's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Anyone like to speak? Come on. My name is Kristen Holland. I live at 490 Borders Road. Uh, just a little over four years ago, my husband and I moved here from Buford in Gwinnett County to get away from that hustle and bustle. Every vehicle ride, what's a seven minute ride here, is 20, 25 minutes there. Um, we were tired of it, that's why we came here. We now have a son who's two and a half, and I want him to be able to grow up in the type of community where you're not stressed just trying to get to Walmart, you know? Um, I want to know that when he gets on the bus to go to school, he's not gonna be hit by one of these tractor trailers in this dangerous area and the dangerous curve that everyone's talking about, the tight space to make those turns. Um, it's just not something that we wanna think about. I know that when I'm in my vehicle, I am being observant, I'm keeping him safe as, I, as possible, but right there in that curve and on that tight turn, it's, you know, for a bus passing by, it's, they're not gonna be able to be quite, you know, quite as defensive as I may be. Um, when he's out of my hands, I wanna know that he's as safe as possible regardless of who's transporting him. Um, I think that we need to be thinking about the future and thinking about keeping this area agricultural where we are all neighbors, we all know each other. We don't need to be bringing, you know, more hustle and bustle to the area. And that's all I'm thinking about is the future of our kids. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Holland. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? You raise your hand. Come on. 
Um, thank you for allowing us to speak um, this evening. Um, rezoning 633 Mill Road to light industrial is just not the, in the best interest of Franklin County nor Bates County residents of Mill Road. Um, I know several people ahead of me have mentioned several of these points, but um, as a teacher, um, the safety of our kids is priority. I know it is to you and it is to to all the, the residents of Banks County and Franklin County. But I have met, I watched the school buses go down the road in front of my house and my husband and I actually measured, got out the road and measured the road and it's only 19 feet wide and it's um, nine feet five inches just to the center line. So this is a very, very narrow road um, and it's just not designed for heavy equipment um, it's just, it poses a safety hazard. Uh, we have a lot of elderly residents that live on our road and I fear for their safety as they're pulling out into the road and we've got all, all of these big trucks going, flying up and down the road. I worry for their safety. We have lots of residents who own horses on that road um, and I fear for them as they travel up and down the road um, with their horses. and. As for a Troy Construction representative at our last meeting, he said that this will not provide additional jobs. So, you know, I know some people have said, you know, we need this because of additional jobs. Well, they, out of their mouths, they said it's not going to provide additional jobs. Um, and also, they said that both ends, Troy Construction also stated at our last meeting, that both ends of the road will be used by their trucks. So not only is it a concern for Franklin County residents of that road, it's also a concern for Banks County residents of that road. And my husband and I recently moved to 202 Mill Road uh, in May, and we moved to this area, like several people have said before, um, just because we love the ruralness of the area. I mean, it's so rural, we can't even get internet access. <laughs> That's how rural it is. So, um, but we love it regardless. Um, it's, we downsized from a larger home. Our kids have grown up and out of the house, we have a grandson. And we just wanted a property where he could come and ride his four-wheeler, he could, um, do all the things that little boys like to do and not have to worry about his safety um, when he's out playing in the yard that some big truck is going to fly by and you know maybe run off the road and um, there there to be a fatality or something like that that would be devastating um, and and everyone else is covered um, all in the road, the gravel part of the road where 60, uh, 633 Mill Road where they are planning to rezone, it's just like the gentleman early, earlier said that when there's a heavy rain, it gets really rutted out. Um, the, that resident said he then has to get out there and scrape the road. And I've even heard people who um, have children on that road who ride the bus they have to meet, sometimes when it rains really hard, they have to meet the bus at the end of 59 to drop off their kids because the buses won't even go through because the roads are so um, so dangerous and impassable. So um, thank you so much. Um, I want growth in Franklin County, Banks County as much as everyone else, but I just feel like that our little road is not suited for that. Okay, thank, thank you, Ms. Patrick. Anyone like to speak? Come on. Good evening. Hey. Thank you for allowing me to voice my opinion in opposition to the proposed zoning request at 653 Mill Road. My husband has owned the property 70 something acres on Mill Road for over 40 years. I've lived there for over 30. We like being in the country. I've lived in downtown Gainesville for a part of my life, and I like being in a rural area. Um, the biggest problem that I see with this 
is the ingress egress into both roads 63 and 59. They're not, the road is not wide enough. There are no um, right of way and shovelers on that road. To, in order to make that road safe for the vehicles, our vehicles, along with this company's vehicles, the road needs to be wide and taken care of. In order to do that, we have to buy a lot of right of ways because not everyone gave their right of way when those when the road was paved and or the other end, from what I understand. But I do know that the end that's paved, not everyone gave the right of way. The purchase of the right of ways, moving the utilities because the utilities are right on the road. So I see a monetary expense for the country, for the county, um, that may not have been brought up before. And I just wanted to bring that to light. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anyone would like to speak? You'll raise your hand. Anyone else like to speak? Come on. Um, Victor Trujillo. I'm just supposed to this uh, light um, industrial might want to call it commercial. Mm -hmm. The only reason I post this traffic and I just don't want this to look like uh, Bass County, Jackson County, with the owners of this uh, property right now, they're calling for light industrial. But if they sell that place, that can be an empty place or sell to somebody else, like somebody was talking earlier, then we might don't have a no more light industrial that can be heavy industrial and this don't allow for this uh for this road also the they want to buy it like for low taxes and my question is what it really benefits franklin county from this it really don't benefit a lot from Franklin County. It benefits more to Banks County. If they want to do this in Banks County, they got more properties on Banks County and they can have it all. We don't want none of this. Um, we don't want no, no traffic. We like the way it is right now, and that to be resounding this, uh, it really don't, it really don't go help a lot for Franklin County. Like I said once again, I I like the way it is. If anything that they can do to not to do this industrial, I could be more than happy to stay in Franklin as well. Because a lot of people come from Winnet County, tired from traffic. I'm also come from Winnet County and I was tired of traffic. And the reason we moved over here that was to stay in a quiet place and stay away from big trucks and stay away from traffic and this is this is the reason that, that we move over this way I think that's it right. thank you Mr. Right. Thank you. anyone like to speak come on Jason Connor, 24954, Highway 59. 
Thank you. The gentleman, I don't, I don't live on Neil Road. I think everybody else has come up here has got a grasp on, you know, their road, their section, everything else. But I do live about a quarter mile down from it. My concern is the entrance and exit off of 59. I can't speak for 63 because I don't go down that way. But on 59, right there where it comes out of Boulder Springs Road, it is very difficult to see. I don't know if any of y'all have actually <laughs> went down to this area that we're discussing to look or pull out to see how this is, you know, going strange. But pulling big equipment in and out of that road, I think, is going to be a dangerous spot for people coming up over the hill and especially coming from Carnesville back towards, you know, I mean, yeah, Carnesville back towards Commerce. Just the sight distance, especially the lady said back here, if you have to pull out, use both lanes because of the width of that road getting in and out. It's just going to be a dangerous situation. And from my standpoint, they already got, you know, we get a lot of traffic coming anytime there's a wreck on 85. It seems like there's one every two or three days with the construction and everything else. They always ride it down 59. And it's, uh, you know, it's hard to get it out of the driveway from E. And I've got pretty good sight distance, but I can just imagine, you know, stuff coming in and out of that, that mill road with big equipment to navigate going left to right. So that's what I have to say about it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tyre. Any else, anyone else like to speak? Okay. My biggest concern is, as many people have other stated, that it takes both lanes to come off the mill road on the 59. Um, we live at the corner of 59 and Bold Springs, and I can tell you when they come in and did the login before, our yard was tore up all over the site. Those trucks cannot make. <clears throat> those turns without coming over into our yard. Um, so that puts dang everybody in the road on, in danger. Um, also, my kids, obviously I have little ones, but as they grow and if this goes through, it only opens the door for more things to come through. Um, we moved out here from Jefferson to get away from the traffic. Um, and if this was to come through and it opens more doors, then you know, I have to stress on my kids and them already trying to pull out on the 59 from Bold Springs. I and mean, if you add these big trucks, then, you know, to open the door for everything else. Um, that's just one of my biggest concerns. Okay. Thank you. We appreciate it, Ms. Eubanks. Anyone else want, like to speak? Anyone? I don't want to leave anybody out. Anybody want to speak? Okay. If you can have more per, uh, any more public comments, we'll close this portion of the meeting and move on uh, to the next agenda item. Uh, the next agenda item is a personnel report. Mr. Turner, do you have anything for us tonight? Uh, no. Okay, thank you, Mr. Turner. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes uh, of the prior meeting minutes from the month of October. And this includes three meetings, a public hearing on October the 4th, 2021, a regular board meeting on October the 4th, 2021, and a work session on October the 26th, 2021. All the commissioners have been provided with a copy of the draft minutes for these prior meetings. Do any of you know of any corrections that need to be made? Okay. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the prior meeting minutes as presented? I make a motion that we approve the prior, prior uh, meeting minutes as presented. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Westers made the motion to approve the prior meeting minutes as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Foster seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to approve the prior meeting minutes as presented, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry four to zero, and the prior meeting minutes are approved as presented. Next item, or, or the next thing on the agenda, are the items for discussion 7A. Uh, Lisa McMillan is here to discuss a lease law proposal. Uh, so we'll have her come up in a moment. But as a reminder, you have five minute time limit to discuss your proposal, and this includes any question and answer. So if you want to come on up. Hi, my name is Thank Lisa you. McMillan, a co owner of the Bunny Pet Salon and a resident of Franklin County. I'm here to speak about why a leash confinement law is important for our county. 
first let me define what a leash law is. A leash law, confinement law, is an ordinance requiring pets to be confined within a yard, within the house, or on a leash when off the owner's property. This obviously does not apply to hunting or guardian dogs while working, as leashes would restrict them from their ability to perform, sorry, perform their jobs. Pets who aren't confined are possibly subject to many forms of death. Most common is hit by cars. If death, even if death is an instant, this can cause life-altering injury and extensive treatment. Many owners cannot afford this treatment and opt to have them put to sleep. Another form of death or painful injury is wild or domestic animals. Often dogs and cats are ripped to pieces by coyotes or packs of loose dogs, hawks, and many other animals. Also being kicked by livestock or deer can cause serious injury and could result in death or expensive treatment. Farmers with livestock, chickens, cows, etc., often shoot predatory animals such as dogs and coyotes to protect their livestock. Some put out poison which can be disastrous to local livestock, wildlife who ingest poison or poisoned animals. One of the most common ways to use to poison animals as antifreeze because it's inexpensive and easily got. This also occurs accidentally when it's not properly disposed of. Dr. Mackinson can explain what kind of death these pets have. Pets running loose can cause many forms of damage. Damage to cars both directly and indirectly, like when you swerve to miss and wreck. Owners, if found, are responsible for damages. They can cause damage to property by chewing items, getting into trash. Livestock, especially chickens and other fowl, are often killed by or killed by or injured by loose pets. Even cattle and horses can be spooked by a dog barking and biting at them and can get injured while trying to escape. Another form of damage is from bites. Many people yearly are attacked by loose dogs who may become feral or frightened. Small children can be seriously injured or even killed in such attacks. Which leads me to the health risks. Loose pets can have, as stated before, dog and cat bites can be devastating. Not only can a large dog seriously maim and even kill a person, dog and cat bites often cause serious infection. There is also the risk of rabies. Franklin County has a high number of rabies positive cases, and while many of these cases occur in wildlife, loose pets run a higher risk of coming in contact with rabid animals. Any pet suspected of exposure can, one, if current on rabies vaccine, be revaccinated and quarantined for 45 days. Two, if overdue with proof that it has been vaccinated in the past, be revaccinated and quarantined for 45 days. Or three, if never vaccinated or there is no proof that it has ever been, euthanization and the head submitted to a proper diagnostic lab for testing. That is the only way to test for rabies. Another risk to the animals is mating. While puppies and kittens are cute, our local shelters are overrun. Hart County Humane Society and Hart County animal rescue pull as many as they possibly can, but they are currently as full as possible too. There are other risks to mating. A large dog trying to mate with a much smaller dog can kill her, and if she survives, giving birth to too large of puppies can kill her also. And some breeds of dogs are predis sorry, predispositioned to complications during the birthing process. Male dogs aren't safe during mating either. It's very common for fights to occur between male dogs or male cats wanting to breed the female. While often it isn't a fight to the death, it certainly can be, and almost always causes injury, oftentimes requiring expensive treatment. Franklin County needs to take action. We need these laws, not only to protect the pets we profess to love, but to protect other citizens. I have a petition, which unfortunately... I'm going to have to cut you off there. Thank you. Uh, 
I would say that the board does share your concern about animal control, and we have actually been considering a potential ordinance for some time. Our challenge is to find a way to fund that, uh, but we are working on that. I, I think everybody probably agrees that, that there are important animal control issues like you talked about. I would appreciate it. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is 7B, a rezone application. Chris Moon of 345 Smith Road, Livonia has filed an application for an amendment to the Franklin County zoning map from commercial general to agricultural intensive for an approximately 24.24 .24 acre tract of land located on Pleasant Hill Road and further identified as tax parcel 062-127C. So this time I'm going to have our planning and zoning director summarize this for the board and then commissioners have the opportunity to ask questions. Yeah, good evening, gentlemen. Um, as stated earlier, y'all heard in the public hearing for this application, Mr. Moon is wanting to build a residential house on a commercially zoned lot. Uh, so he's, he's looking to rezone it back to residential. It was zoned commercial general back in 2005 when zoning was first adopted in Franklin County. Um, and there's been no you know, record of any, any attempt to zone um, prior to tonight. The, the Planning Commission heard this application. They unanimously, unanimously recommended approving it. Uh, it's my recommendation to approve it as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's start. Commissioner Wester, do you have any questions? Uh, Commissioner Swills? I don't. Commissioner Foster? I don't. Commissioner Franklin? No, sir. Okay. All right. If there's no other at this time, is there a motion to act on the application by Chris Moon for an amendment to the Franklin County zoning map from commercial general to ag intensive for tax parcel 062-127C? I'll make a motion to uh, change that zone into ag intensive. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Foster has made a motion to approve this application. Is there a second? I second, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Commissioner Franklin has seconded the motion. Is there any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor of the motion to approve this application by Chris Moon uh, for an amendment to the Frank County zoning map from commercial general to ag intensive, and this is tax parcel 062-127C, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry four to zero, and the zoning amendment application is approved. The next item on the agenda is the Retired Educators Day Proclamation. The Governor of Georgia has proclaimed Sunday, November the 7th, 2021 as Retired Educators Day in Georgia, and the Franklin County Retired Educators Association has asked the county to issue a proclamation to this effect in order to recognize our local retired educators. Uh, tonight, is Ms. Dove here? Ms. Dove? Okay. All right. Ms. Barbara Dove is with us from the Franklin County Retired Educators Association. Our local members of the teaching profession spend their entire careers devoted to young people, and it's important that we recognize them for their contributions to our community's well-being and show our appreciation for them. Several of us here on the Board of Commissioners, myself included, are either members of or have direct ties to education and have worked in the local school system. So I'm going to read this proclamation and then ask for a motion to approve, and then afterwards we can go down and present that to Ms. Dove on behalf of the Educators Association. Uh, this is a proclamation of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners, whereas the governor of the state of Georgia has proclaimed the day of Sunday, November the 7th, 2021, as Retired Educators Day in Georgia, and whereas there are more than 135,000 retired educators in Georgia, 31,000 plus of whom are members of the Georgia Retired Educators Association, and whereas the retired educators of Georgia donate thousands of hours of volunteer service and make invaluable contributions to the welfare of their respective communities across the state, and whereas it is appropriate that a day be designed for citizens to express their appreciation for the contributions that retired educators have made and continue to make for the betterment of human lives and for society, and whereas local churches will recognize those lasting contributions made by retired educators in this community. Now, therefore, the Franklin County Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim the day of November the 7th, 2021 as Retired Educators Day, and we call upon the citizens of Franklin County to observe that day in an appropriate manner, honoring retired educators. Uh, so at this time, is there a motion to approve this proclamation designating November 7, 2021 as Retired Educators Day? I make that motion. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Franklin has made the motion that we approve the proclamation. Is there a second? Second. 
Thank you. Commissioner Swales has seconded the motion. Is there any further discussion? All in favor of approving the proclamation that designates November the 7th, 2021 as Retired Educators Day, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry four to zero and the proclamation is approved. Uh, is Shane Scoggins here? No, he's not here. Can, can you guys take a picture? We're going to come down, Miss Dove. If you'll come up to the front, we're going to present this to you. Okay, we appreciate that. The next item on the agenda is 7D. This is the ACCG Defined Contribution Plan Amendment and Restatement. Uh, and the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia, that's the ACCG, has advised the county of the need to amend and restate our 401A Defined Contribution Plan for our county employees. And this is just to keep the plan current with changes in the law and to protect the plan's tax qualified status on the IRS code. So I'm going to ask Mr. Turner to present that to us and then if we have questions. That explains the good bulk of it, um, uh, but it is just uh, something that we do for compliance just to make sure that uh, everything is up to date, taking a look at that and make sure that we are the laws uh, as they're always changed on HR retirement type of things are typically ongoing that they're going to change pretty frequently. Um, this does not affect any of our current staff, but this will be affected. Okay. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Mr. Turner? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. You have the resolution before you. Is that this time is there a motion to adopt this resolution and this just adopts the amended and restated 401A defined contribution plan for Franklin County employees? The commission that we adopt the resolution. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Swales has made a motion to adopt the resolution. Is there a second? No, second. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Foster has seconded the motion. Is there any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to adopt the resolution for the amended and restated 401A defined contribution plan for Franklin County employees signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry four to zero and the resolution is adopted. Next item on the agenda is 7E, Neil Road Update. At our October the 4th, 2021 public hearing and regular board meeting, the Board of Commissioners considered and tabled a zoning application by Troy Construction LLC. Troy Construction LLC of 3375 Maysville Road, Commerce, Georgia, has filed an application for an amendment to the Franklin County zoning map from ag intensive to light industrial on an approximately 15.44 acre tract of land located at 633 Neal Road and further identified as tax parcel 006-018. The Board of Commissioners tabled this application at the regular board meeting of October the 4th, and we ask our county staff to communicate with members of the Banks County Board of Commissioners as to their input on the application since part of Neal Road lies in Banks County. Staff was also asked to communicate with the Georgia DOT uh, as to any further requirements if the application were approved. So this time I'm going to ask our planning director, Mr. Lozier, to give the board an update. Good 
Good evening again, gentlemen. Uh, so our last board meeting, I think, was the 4th or 5th of October. October 4th. Um, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, and the you know, next day or two after, the 5th or 6th of October. Uh, I'd spoken with uh, Banks County Commissioner Sammy Reese. Uh, he said he'd spoken to uh, three other members of the Banks County Board. Uh, they said they had no issues with this. Troy Construction is actually doing some um, utility work for Banks County currently. I'm not exactly sure if it's gas line, water line, but it's, it's some utility work that they're doing. Uh, they said so far their experience with Troy Construction has been nothing nothing but stellar. They've had, they had good things to say about the company and the work that they were doing. Uh, and furthermore, he said they, hit, they had no issues with the Troy Construction application and would not uh, try to stand in their way or our way or anything. I also spoke with uh, Jason Dykes of the DOT. He kind of does the traffic engineer for the Carnesville office. I spoke to his boss, who's uh, Shane Jones, who works out of the Gainesville office in, uh, for the DOT. He's over the, the region. Uh, they, uh, Shane said that there's potential that, that Troy Construction would have to widen the entrance to Neal Road, uh, where Neal Road and 59 intersect. Uh, that's going to be a DOT call once they see the impact of, um, you know, if this passes, what that impact is going to be to Neil Road. Um, I, you know, I discussed it with the applicant as well. Troy Construction let them know what the potential was there. They they had fully agreed to do any improvements to that um, to that intersection if they needed to do it if if DOT saw fit. Um, and that's that's all the update that I have on that application. Okay, uh, Commissioner, let's start. Commissioner Wester, do you have any questions for Mr. Lozier? Uh, I guess the one question is the Banks County line. Yeah, so I've got the recorded plat with me. Um, this is what is in the courthouse. This is the legal script, you know, legal from a license surveyor. This is the track. You can see Franklin County, Banks County line. There's also a note on here that says property line is county line, which should say this entire track is in Franklin County. This is a this is like a Google image. This isn't a this isn't a legal document. This is a legal document. Thank you. Do you have anything else, uh, Commissioner Wester? Commissioner Swales, do you have anything? I don't. Okay. Commissioner Foster, do you have anything? I don't have anything there. No. Okay, Commissioner Franklin. I wonder what the right of way is for the DOT. Because that's all, the way I see it, that's all the DOT is going to make them do is whatever the width of the right-of-way. Am I that'd right be or 59. wrong? Yeah, that'd be out 59. I don't know what the right-of-way is for 59. I do know what the right-of-way is for I-85. And if you look on that plat, there was markers found. Uh, so this is... You know, it indicates here that there is a right of way marker found here for I 85. I 85 has a 300 foot right of way. And then it says right of way monument found here, uh, which indicates a 100 foot right of way here uh, for this strip. But this Neil Road is, is a Franklin County road, it's not a DOT road. And it's just from ditch to ditch. Well, accor according to this plat, it's a 100 foot. So you've got, a, you've, got a, you've got a right of way monument that was found by the surveyor. And then you've got the other the property pin that was found by the surveyor, um, which this is this is what I have. This is what we have to go off of is this recorded plat. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Franklin? No, sir. Any other questions? Anyone else? All right. Thank you, commissioners. Is there any further discussion on this matter? Sure. I'll move that we take this uh, Troy Construction LLC zoning application from the table and resume consideration. Okay. All right. So Commissioner Swells has made a motion that we take the Troy Construction LLC zoning application from the table and resume consideration. So is there a second to that motion? I'll second. That's Commissioner Swells. Okay. <laughs> what, what you, I, said, you said Swells. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Commissioner Foster made the motion. Commissioner Swells second. Sorry. I apologize. All right. All in favor of the motion to take the Troy Construction LLC zoning application from the table and resume consi uh, consideration. Signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. 
Okay, the motion will carry four to zero, and the Troy Construction LLC zoning application is taken from the table to resume consideration. So I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Delosier to resummarize that application by yeah. Troy. So, uh, yeah, to summarize, they, they, they're a utility uh, pipeline construction company. You know, they're not they're not a contractor, they're not building house or anything. It's it's, it's utility work, what they do. Uh, and they need they need a, a site to store materials and equipment. And that's what they're looking to do with this, this track of land. Uh, the planning commission heard this in the in the September planning commission meeting. They unanimously recommended approving it. Um, I took our road superintendent out to the site as well. Uh, he looked at the site. And he said that their plan for ingress and egress off the of Neil Road onto the property was sufficient. Uh, and again, DOT has kind of said they'll have to wait to see before they. You know, there's not anything they can definitively give me at this point in time. And your recommendation is? My recommendation is approved. Okay. And in any condition, I mean, what are the specific conditions that we the, state? The conditions that the uh, planning commission recommended put on it was to have our road superintendent go uh, uh, out and Review, review the property and make sure that the plan that they have for ingress and egress would be sufficient from a Franklin County Road Department perspective. And then also have a conversation regarding the maintenance of the road, um, which both of those have been completed. Uh, the maintenance of the road, the road superintendent suggested that it, it remains just let, let the county maintain the road and not, you know, just, I don't really know. I think there's some legal stuff when you start letting private entities maintain a public road, all that kind of stuff. Um, but those were the two conditions that the planning and, commission recommended. And that condition with the road superintendent, I mean, he's fulfilled that condition. He has. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Me and him went out there shortly after the planning commission meeting and looked at it. Okay. Commissioners, do you have questions for Mr. Lozier? Now, will the, uh, will the DOT, if, if, if this is passed, is that when the DOT is going to do their... That should be. I'll have you know if it's approved. I'm going to have to reach back out to Shane Jones, who is the traffic engineer out of Gainesville, let him know what's going on, and then from there they'll start their their piece so, of it. So they won't do anything until it's, it's approved. Correct. I mean, there's there's no action right. There's no action for them to take if they don't know that it's, it's going to happen. Right. Okay. Any other questions, Commissioner Swales, Mr. Foster, Mr. Franklin? Do you have anything? It, we'll just note for the record, we, we do have copies of the petition that was submitted, and co this is a copy of the petition that was expanded. Additional uh, names were added since the first time it was submitted, and so we'll have the clerk enter the petition into the record. Okay, so at this time, is there a motion to act on the application by Troy Construction LLC for an amendment to the Franklin County zoning map from ag intensive to light industrial for tax parcel 006-018? I, I make a motion that we approve uh, the amended uh, property to be AI, or I'm sorry, to be uh, light industrial. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Swells has made a motion that we approve the application by Troy Construction LLC for an amendment to the Frank County zoning map from ag intensive to light industrial, and this is tax parcel 006 018. Is that correct? Is there a second to the motion? No, second. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Foster has seconded the motion. Is there any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor of the motion to approve the application by Troy Construction LLC for an amendment to the Franklin County zoning map from ag intensive to light industrial for tax parcel 006-018 signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Okay. The motion will carry three to one, and the zoning amendment application is approved. All right, the next item on tonight's agenda is LMIG 2022. Let's pause for a minute. If someone will leave, we'll give them time to go. We'll have, to, we'll have to do this at another time. The, you, have to, you just have to call the county office. Okay. Thank you.
All right, the next item on the agenda is 7F, the LMIG 2022 project list. Uh, each year we select roads for resurfacing using funds from a local maintenance and improvement grant that we receive from the Georgia Department of Transportation. So, Commissioners, you have a list of those projects. I'm going to ask the county manager to further uh, review that. All right. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, so, like we said, we have the list that's in front of you um, that we've selected four roads this year. Um, again, the LMIG is an ongoing uh, grant that we get year over year uh, that has a county match of about 30 of it. Uh, so, as you see from the four roads, this covers about 5.29 miles uh, with the GDOT funding coming in at about 593000 Our county match would be about 178000 for total just around $771,000 that would go towards road improvement. So this is part of uh, sort of our road's overall maintenance addition to our match and of course of the year. But any questions about the uh, Can you give it, give it, let's just for the record, for the public record, list of roads. Sure. All right, so we're gonna be doing Neil Little Road. So we'll do 1.94 miles of that road, Bold Springs Church Road, 1.74 miles, Brittany Cove, We'll do 0.9 miles of road, and Lakeshore Drive, uh, 0.71 miles of road uh, for a total of 5 points road that we'll cover within this LD. Okay. Commissioners, do you have questions? Commissioner Franklin? No, sir. Commissioner Foster? No, sir. Commissioner Swales? Commissioner Wester? <coughs> and he, uh, the total you said was seven, about $771,000? Uh, the exact $771,796.69. Uh, and that that's a, I just want to point out that's a very close uh, figure to uh, one mill of property tax. At least recently, a mill of property tax is about seven hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Okay. At this one, time, I'm oh, sorry. One more question. When will y'all let that out? I guess when will we put bids out for the companies to come bid on it. Uh, you know, we probably do that within this month. Okay. All right. Okay. That's all I have. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Hearing none. This time, is there a motion to approve the LMIG 2022 projects? I'll make a motion to approve the LMIG 2022 projects that oh. have been presented to us. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Wester's made a motion to approve the LMIG 2022 projects. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second that. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Foster has seconded the motion. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to approve the LMIG 2022 projects signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry four to zero and the LMIG 2022 projects are approved. Next item on the agenda is 7G, the service delivery strategy. Uh, we've been provided with a copy of the updated SDS, which is required by local governments in Georgia and has to be updated with the Department of Commun Community Affairs from time to time. The documents that each commissioner received consist of a copy of the revised service delivery strategy for Franklin County in a certification form. I've already signed uh, form five, which extends the current SDS date until next February. And this is to give the DCA time to review and, uh, and approve the update. So what the board needs to do tonight is to approve the update and authorize me to sign off on that update, which is form four. Uh, this is something that the county and the cities have been working on for the last year. And so each city and the county will separately sign off on it, but it's a collaborative group effort. So everyone has had time to review the update. Do we have any questions about that? Any questions? Okay. Thank you. This time is there a motion to approve the, update, the SDS update and authorize the chair to sign it? I'll make that motion. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Foster has made a motion to approve the SDS update and authorize the chair to sign. Is there a second? A second. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Franklin has seconded the motion. Is there any further discussion? Any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to approve the SDS update and authorize the chair to sign, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Okay. The motion will carry four to zero. And that update is approved. All right, the next item on the agenda is the county manager report. So I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Turner. Um, I actually don't have anything additional tonight. Uh, those prior items were items that uh, I want to read. Okay. Sounds good. All right, so the, la the next item is announcements. Do you have any announcements for us? Okay. Um, 
just a couple of announcements. Um, I know this is within our upcoming meetings, but just a reminder to everyone that we have fall retreat uh, for planning with the Board of Commissioners uh, this coming Wednesday, November 3rd. That's from noon until, uh, but hopefully not until too, too late, at the Carnesville Community Center. Um, and this is just for planning purposes. Uh, this is strategic, so this also involves our department, some of those that will be speaking. Uh, just so that we're able to go through and start working on planning and enter the next budget season, uh, which would typically kick off somewhere around mid. Um, other quick announcement is just talking about our hometown heroes event that's coming up on November 13th um, from 11 to 7 with the dedication starting at 9 a.m. Um, we're still looking for volunteers, so if there are anybody that, if there is anybody that would still like to volunteer, they please contact the county clerk, uh, Ms. Finger. And also, just to let everybody know, this is just a community development event for us, just something that we'd like to get all the, uh, the families out here. This is food, family, fun. Entry to it is free, uh, so there's no cost. There will be uh, food food vendors that are going to be on site, other things, games, touch a truck, other activities that we'll have for all the families. So we hope that everybody takes the opportunity to come out there that day. And fireworks that evening? Yes, and fireworks to, to finish off. Okay. Anything else? All right. I was going to say just thank you to everyone who came out tonight. Uh, this is the first time, I said this earlier, this is the first time we're back in person after uh, meeting virtually for a couple of months due to the public health crisis. So we appreciate everyone coming. Uh, we, we did that to promote and preserve public safety. Uh, when you have a large number of people in a room for a long period of time, that could cause uh, some risk. And so, Again, we encourage everybody who comes to our meetings to practice social distancing, wear a mask if you feel that's appropriate. Uh, I want to encourage everyone in Franklin County to vote tomorrow. If you haven't already voted early, uh, go to your local precinct for tomorrow. There are a lot of local city races, but there are also four county referendum on alcohol sales in the unincorporated areas of the county. And this is to give citizens an opportunity to weigh in and give your voice on whether or not uh, those kinds of alcohol sales should occur. Um, that's all I have. Mr. Wester, do you have anything? Yes. Mr. Swales? No. Mr. Foster? Nothing. Mr. Franklin? No, okay. Next item is adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Wester has made a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? No, second. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Foster seconded the motion. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion will carry four to zero and we stand adjourned. Thank you everyone for coming tonight.